Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a science fiction horror film, Extinction. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with two school buses riding through the night. However, the buses are not filled with children. Instead, worried adults and stern soldiers are inside the vehicles. A message plays on loop on the speakers, informing the people that the city is under evacuation and the strict martial law is being imposed. The buses enter the town of Harmony, where they are expected to take shelter. However, the bus at the front suddenly stops. Gunshots are fired. A soldier from the second bus steps out to investigate. He instructs the others to remain on the bus for their safety. But a minute later, a second soldier steps out. He's suddenly attacked by a rabid human and dies. But the soldier resurrects as another rabid zombie. This starts a wave of zombie attacks against the bus riders. More and more people get infected, and the survivors scatter in different directions. Among them are a couple and their infant baby. Another man named Jack is also with them. However, the wife and the baby get separated from the husband. She hides in a car with the baby, but a zombie finds them. Luckily, Jack rescues them. To her horror, the wife discovers that there is blood on the baby. She hands her to Jack, so he can check if the baby is injured. Her husband arrives as well and looks at his daughter. But the wife discovers the truth. She is the one who the zombie bit. She rolls up her sleeves and shows the two men the huge bite on her arm. Nine years later, both Jack and the man are still in harmony. They are living in separate houses with a chain-link fence in between them. Curiously, the baby, who is named Lou, is now a young child and leaves with Jack rather than living with her biological father. Jack and the man appear to not be talking at all, and the man's wife isn't anywhere to be found. Every morning, the man goes on his snowmobile and ventures out of the town to hunt. Today, he ends up in an abandoned frozen city and shoots down a horse. He takes the horse carcass back home with him. He cooks horse steak for dinner and feeds his dog, which seems to be his only companion. The man's hair is now long, and he is sporting an unkempt beard, with the nickname Messy Beard. He is also now dependent on alcohol. In comparison, Jack and Lou are struggling with food. They have to make do with their dwindling supply of moldy cans. Lou remarks that she doesn't even remember what real meat tastes like. Jack keeps a tidy home and makes sure to teach Lou basic school subjects every day. He is every bit the devoted father and is very strict with what the young girl can or cannot do. For example, Lou is forbidden from going near the fence or talking to Messy Beard, her biological father, possibly because he's too messy and smelly. After dinner, Messy Beard sits down in front of his makeshift radio station. He broadcasts his nightly message looking for other people who might still be alive, but his words just echo through the cold and empty town. The next morning, Lou secretly plays with Messy Beard's messy dog across the fence. The dog has dug a hole under the fence, possibly looking for some smelly shit, but Lou says that Jack wouldn't like that. That night, Jack gives Lou a box containing a red scarf, lipstick, and a picture of her mother when she was a young girl. In the neighboring house, all Messy Beard can do is play the happy birthday song on his speakers for Lou. He even baked her a cake, but he's forbidden from ever talking to her. In Jack's house, Lou asks him if the monsters she had heard about growing up are really real. He replies that they were real, but the harsh cold climate in Harmony killed the zombies. That night, Lou abruptly wakes up. She takes a lantern and steps closer to the window. She sees the silhouette of a zombie across the fence. In the distance, the dog barks at the intruder. Lou gets scared and hides under the bed. This is where Jack finds her in the morning. The young girl confesses that she saw a pale white monster last night. Jack convinces her that it is just a bad nightmare. Lou reasons that if Jack really is so sure that all the monsters are gone, then why doesn't he allow her to go with him on his food gathering trips? Jack skirts the topic and suggests that they get food from their kitchen instead. Sometime later, Lou goes to the fence to play with the messy dog. This time, she comes face to face with Messy Beard, who's overjoyed to see his daughter. But Jack immediately runs to them with a gun and threatens Messy Beard. Messy Beard backs away and leaves on his snowmobile. He and the dog go inside a storage shed. They find a half-eaten fox corpse. Messy Beard follows the trail of blood and sees a zombie. The zombie chases after him, but he and the dog make it out, and Messy Beard manages to slam the storage door on it. However, the zombie is very strong, and it wouldn't be long before it gets out. Messy Beard and the dog flee as fast as they can. But in his panic, Messy Beard crashes his snowmobile into a tree. The zombie catches up to them. It hovers over Messy Beard, who's lying on the ground. However, it inexplicably doesn't see Messy Beard. Its ears make a clicking sound, as if trying to hone in on any noises. At that moment, Jack is teaching Lou how to shoot with a gun. The force of the first shot sends Lou sprawling to the snow. 
The noises they're making attract the zombie, and it quickly runs toward Jack's house. Messy Beard realizes that the zombie is heading for Jack and Lou, so he gets on his snowmobile and races to his house. Jack sees Messy Beard coming in the distance. Messy Beard is firing shots from his gun to get Jack's attention. The zombie suddenly appears and knocks Messy Beard off the snowmobile. Messy Beard and the zombie wrestle their muscles in the snow. Jack steps closer with his gun, and Lou begs him to shoot the zombie so he can save Messy Beard's messy life. But Jack doesn't pull the trigger. The zombie bites Messy Beard's neck. The messy dog comes to his rescue and attacks the zombie. The zombie fights back and overpowers the dog, fatally wounding it. Messy Beard is heartbroken and mourns the loss of the only messy friend he has left in the world. Meanwhile, Jack takes Lou inside the house. The young girl is crying. She is upset that Jack didn't help Messy Beard and just let the dog die. Messy Beard starts hallucinating as an effect of the bite. He remembers the night that his wife was bitten. He had to amputate her arm to save her from infection. Messy Beard lies down on the floor of his house. He hears a voice coming from his radio. It's another survivor who's in the area. Messy Beard is happy that there are other human beings out there, but he is infected. He shares that with the survivor. The survivor replies that it's been hours already since he was bitten, so he must not be infected. Messy Beard replies that he will kill that zombie for what it did. He then hallucinates another voice, telling him that the zombie is not the one he should be taking revenge on. It was Jack's fault for not helping him. Meanwhile, Jack boards up his house as a precaution against Messy Beard, who he thinks will turn into a messy zombie. But morning comes, and Messy Beard is still a human. Jack gets into an argument with Lou, who's tired of being trapped inside the house and not being able to do anything. Jack goes outside for a food gathering trip. He visits a house where an elderly couple killed themselves. He sees a bunch of preserved flowers and gives them to Lou. That night, Lou sneaks out of the house with the flowers in one hand. She wants to place the flowers on the dog's grave to honor her friend. She crawls under the fence to go to Messy Beard's house. Jack sees her from the upstairs window, and he runs out of the house. The zombie returns and tries to attack Lou. Jack fights the zombie and pummels it with punches. But before it dies, it manages to claw at his chest. Lou loses consciousness and has blood streaming from her head. A few meters away, Messy Beard is pointing his shotgun at Jack. Jack flinches as the shot echoes through the night, hitting the zombie, who had silently stood up behind him and was about to attack again. Jack wakes up hours later in Messy Beard's house. He calls out for Lou, but doesn't find her. He steps out into the yard and finds Messy Beard with the tied-up zombie. Messy Beard tells Jack that the zombies have now evolved after nine years. They developed hard skin to acclimate to the cold weather, but are now blind and just rely on their heightened hearing. Another difference is that they are no longer contagious, since both Jack and Messy Beard never became infected despite being bitten. Lou reunites with Jack, and they return to their house. Lou contacts Messy Beard through a walkie-talkie and invites him over for dinner. Messy Beard is so excited that he takes a bath and cuts his messy hair to appear presentable to his daughter. He knocks on the door, and Jack reluctantly welcomes him. Lou is bowled over by the sight of a clean Messy Beard, and she hugs him. The three of them sit down at the dinner table, and Messy Beard shares with Lou the toys he liked as a child. Lou suggests that the two men work together to gather supplies and hunt for food. Messy Beard is open to the idea, but Jack doesn't say anything. Later that night, Messy Beard tells a story to Lou until she falls asleep. This leaves the two men to finally talk. Jack apologizes for the death of Messy Beard's messy dog, and Messy Beard forgives him. Jack lays down the law for Messy Beard. He hasn't forgotten what Messy Beard had done in the past, but he's willing to work with him to protect Lou. Messy Beard suggests that he can fix the truck he has, and they can all go somewhere else. But Jack doesn't want to go. He believes that he and Lou can stay safe in their house. Messy Beard tells him that he's being naive, because more zombies will be coming for them. The two argue until Jack makes Messy Beard leave the house. A flashback reveals that Messy Beard became a raging alcoholic after his hormone-holic wife died. He was incapable of taking care of Lou, so Jack stepped in and took her away from Messy Beard. Jack then raised Lou by himself for years. Messy Beard fixes the truck. Jack and Lou go with him for a supply run in town. They arrive at the grocery store. Messy Beard reminisces about the day that his wife died. She was lecturing him about his drinking habit, pleading with Messy Beard to start doing better as Lou's father. But he didn't want to listen to her, so he walked away and left her alone. His wife got inside the truck and was attacked by a peeping zombie. She died because Messy Beard left her alone, and he had been blaming himself ever since. This guilt caused him to shirk his responsibilities as a father, and prompted Jack to take Lou away from Messy Beard. This was why they had not spoken to each other in nine years. 
They are about to go inside the store, when they notice a woman standing frozen across the street. Messy Beard cautiously approaches her, thinking she might be a zombie. It turns out, she is human, but she's very sick due to hypothermia. They take her back with them to the house, and try their best to save her. When she has recovered, the woman tells them her story. For over a year, she stayed inside a house with her family. Eventually, they ventured out in search of other survivors. They met other groups, and she fell in love with a man. She got pregnant with his baby, but he died. The other survivors organized a three-car convoy to get to Harmony after hearing Messy Beard's radio broadcasts. However, they were attacked by several zombies on the way, and she barely survived. After speaking, the woman hears the captured zombies' cries from outside. She grabs a gun and immediately shoots the zombie in the head. She informs Messy Beard that the zombies communicate by howling at each other, and by now, the zombie had probably told the others their location already. Sure enough, more howls echo from a distance. The zombies will be coming for them. Messy Beard and the others reinforce the locks and board up the house. They all prepare their weapons in anticipation of a zombie attack. Jack hides Lou and begs her not to disobey him and just stay quiet no matter what happens. Lou hides in the basement. When she turns around, a zombie is behind her. She suppresses her scream and keeps quiet, so the zombie won't sense her. Upstairs, more zombies are trying to get inside the house. The woman uses all her strength to keep the door closed. A zombie climbs through the bedroom window near Jack's location. However, he doesn't notice because he's busy trying to keep another zombie out of the doorway. The woman surmises that some of the zombies are inside the walls. Messy Beard presses his ear on the wall and hears a zombie slinking around. Lou carefully inches her way across the basement. She drops her stuffed toy and lets it make noise to distract the zombie. A zombie flies out and jumps on Messy Beard. They both land on the floor and wrestle their muscles. Meanwhile, the woman plays a loud song on Messy Beard's record player to confuse the zombies. This allows both Messy Beard and Jack to fend off their attackers. However, there are more zombies waiting outside. The woman and Messy Beard grab their guns and shoot at the zombies outside. Lou sits in front of the radio station and hears an incoming message from a female survivor who's in a nearby area. She urges them to go to her location. The music slows to a halt because the generator has lost its power. They are also running out of ammunition. At this point, it's only a matter of time before the zombies will reach them. Jack goes to Lou and hugs her. He tells her to think of her mother and that she will see her soon. He's about to kill Lou before the zombies can hurt her. But Lou escapes from his embrace and tells him that the woman on the radio told her that shooting the zombies in the head would kill them. She adds that the woman also told her that they can go to where she is because it was safe there. Messy Beard decides to sacrifice himself. He tells Jack that he will draw the zombies away from them, and when they're gone, the others will use the truck to drive to the survivor's location. But before he goes, he emotionally says goodbye to Lou. Messy Beard grabs a flare in his shotgun and steps outside. He starts shooting the zombies and drawing them to him so the others can escape. The zombies flock to Messy Beard and kill him. His last thought before death is a memory of him talking to Lou when she was still inside his wife's pregnant belly. He remembers the hope and love he felt back then and carries a feeling with him as he dies. No matter what, he knows that his daughter will be safe with Jack. His last act is to detonate a bomb to kill him and the zombies. Jack, Lou, and the woman drive through the snowy road. Sometime later, Jack stops the car, and they all get out. The movie ends with the three of them watching the sunrise, with hopeful smiles on their faces. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.